It's November the 11th, 2023, and this is The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. Chris, Jeremiah, Adrian. Hello. 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 hello <laughs> the hello, quickest hello. intro ever. Are we in a hurry today, Chris, by any chance? Uh, just a little. Just a little. By the way, this is actually us, not a representation of us. We were, we were just talking, pre-show, we were talking about the, the, be, the ability that, that AI can copy people, their, their likeness, but not just their face in video, but their voice with three seconds of raw material. So, so we, we encourage everybody to choose a safe word for friends and family, lest one that only be they know. visited uh, by, help, help, I'm being held hostage in a milk bottle factory. Yes. Send money. <laughs> send send $10,000 <laughs> or they won't. I need bail, I need bail. Ah, uh, yeah. Visuals play a big role in that. So we can't talk Sa about it, right? Safety first. <laughs> um. No, we are, we, are, we are doing a tech show today. About a camera. We'll talk tech. Yay, finally. We haven't talked tech in a long time. Um, a camera that is being hyped Outed? big time right now. <laughs> no, it, I, it's, it's, it's not even out yet. It won't be out until spring 24. So um, it's, of course, the new Sony A9 Mark III. Yeah, and what, interesting. What, what is the most remarkable thing about this camera, you might well ask? Yes. Do we, um, actually, that's a good question. Do we all have the same view of what's the most remarkable thing about this camera? Well, this there's camera? only one thing that is actually being talked about uh, <laughs> yeah, on yeah, Petapixel and other places, and that is the global shutter. So just let me, let me run down a few, a few things here. 24 megapixels, eh, okay. Um, uh, global shutter, we'll get to that in a second. Um, 120 frames per second, including focus tracking. With no blackout. With no blackout. Um, shutter speed up to an 80,000th of a second. Gotta Eight shoot zero. that, lest you miss the birthday candle blowing. Right. Um, <laughs> the autofocus down to minus 5 EV, which is like... Anyway, two better than before, so it's like you can pretty much focus with almost no light. Um, yeah. And you can shoot on the surface of the sun in natural light. <laughs> so speaking of, the, of the, the shutter, I think this is the thing. So normally cameras, our, the tools that we use, have a shutter that is read by the camera line by line. So the Typical CMOS shutters, it's like a, a line that sweeps over. Very fast, but still uh, slow enough. So if you have something fast moving, you've probably seen videos, iPhone videos of like a, propell a propeller on, a, on an airplane, or something like that, um, where everything gets like bent out of shape because it moves too fast and the, the line scans the picture. Well, a global shutter it pretty much has two sensors stacked on top of each other. So you have one on the top, that takes the picture, and then when you press the shutter button, all those pixels, all those individual pixels get dumped onto the second layer in real time at the same time. Is that time. how it works? I never knew that. It's a, it's, a, it's a second layer of like the memory cells pretty much. For every pixel, there's a memory cell underneath. And then while it does its other things, then in the background, that's get, that gets read into the memory. Very quickly in this Oh, yeah, case. very quickly. I'm, I'm guessing this must be really hard then, because otherwise they would have done it before, right? Well, it, 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 it adds a, a whole new layer to the, to the sensor. And I think, well, no, global shutters have been around for a while. So we've, we've had global shutters before in mostly video productions. Jeremiah, have you worked with cameras that have global, global shutters? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, they're very expensive. <clears throat> they're generally purpose-built for high-speed photography, etc., but, I, you know, I, I think the thing that is even more remarkable is there is the ability for the camera to remember the moments just before the shutter is uh, engaged so that there's a review there. Um, and the, I think that these things have been around. The problem that camera manufacturers have had is the cost of the compute power within the camera, the, the thinness you know what I mean? How to right, scale okay. yeah, down yeah. the 
the count to make it uh, kind of practical. Um, and because some of these big high speeds, especially film cameras, are they're massive. And and uh, make it affordable. And in, when I say affordable, I'm saying affordable in quotation marks because this camera is um, far from not far. I haven't seen the price of it actually. It's uh, about six thousand dollars. That's so. the, okay. that's a rumor right now. Yeah. Oh, is oh, which it not? Would, okay, right, right. Which would make it uh, the equivalent of a Leica, of the same ilk. I saw a Leica M6 in a shop today for two and a half thousand. No lens, and it's a film camera. Yeah. So <laughs> it's razors so, and yeah. razor blades. <laughs> so the so the global shutter. Um, people people I, I I read about it. I hear about it, and people often I hear the words game changer. Now. We've already established that fast mo fast motion will be the way it looks. No bent pro propellers anymore, or I don't know, a sword or a golf club or something moving fast. Things will be the way they are up to eighty <coughs> thousandth of a second. That is ten times as fast as some of the faster shutters today, which are normally like an eight thousandth of a second. Um, the really interesting thing here, I think, is flash sync. Yeah. Because we yeah. we had always had this problem. If you shoot flash, and people don't <clears> shoot flash as much anymore because cameras have higher ISOs now. But um, but uh, another reason why people don't shoot flash that much anymore is because it's difficult. It's hard. You have to figure out the shutter speed that you can use, and it has to be I don't know a, a two hundredth of a second or something, some more bit yeah. faster. So I think four hundred is the limit. Right, or if you have a really fast leaf shutter, then maybe five hundredth of a second or up to a thousandth, but that is rare. With this camera, you can sync any speed, flush any speed up to eighty an eighty thousandth of a second, which. So here's here's the here's the wild thing, you. Always, when you, when you shoot flash, and everyone who's done that before kind of knows anyone anyone who's done studio work knows that, you will change the brightness of the picture either by ISO or by aperture. The shutter speed is fixed in the studio. It's just the way it is. Uh, in this case, no, you can change the brightness with all three parameters now, which means you can dial down the shutter speed and darken down the picture even you, if you fire the flash at full brightness. So, so you can shoot outside. This, you can shoot outside. That's the next in one. In full yeah. sunlight, emulating night. With your subject lit normal. So, so let, let let me ask a question to you guys and see if you because uh, I don't know the I don't know if they've published stats on this or anything like this to do with this camera. But um, typically, the reason that the exposure for flash photography only includes the aperture and the ISO is because the flash seat, the flash speed, the amount of time that the flash is on for is a lot quicker than the shutter speed. So the shutter speed effectively has no impact on the exposure. Now, my my limited understanding is that really good stro yeah, professional strobes might get as fast as on and off in a 10,000th of a second if they're not on full power. True. And I d but so, so so for the first time ever, we've actually got a shutter that's faster than the speed of light. <laughs> <laughs> you could say that. So uh, a studio strobe with like at full power will go for maybe a two hundredth of a second. It'll take its time. So you can cut okay. this down into very small chunks now, which makes everything so much easier to to understand and work with because it's so much. It's, it's much more along the lines of uh, how you would think. It's not is, as, as counterintuitive as it is. Do I need to unlearn a load of stuff that I spent a long time learning then? Because if you if your flash duration to get a certain amount of light onto the sensor is a two hundredth of a second, or, or yeah, or if, let's just make it round number. Let's say the flash duration is a thousandth of a second, right? Then if you're shooting with a shutter speed of a ten thousandth of a second, aren't you cutting out the vast majority of the light yes. that your flash puts out? That's you are. Okay. That's what right. we're that's talking the about. Point. <laughs> that's, that's the point. That's the point. You can darken down <laughs> by using shutter speed. And that's so, yeah. the, so the shutter speed is going to record everything around it, let's say the studio itself or the exterior. The flash, depending on its distance from the subject, is going to illuminate that subject, um, and 
that's the balance. It's a, it's another creative tool um, to use under specific um, circumstances. Uh, very um, controlled circumstances. That's very. the point with the, with now, the studio. Now, at, at 20 thousandth of, th of a second, when you're doing diving or F1, <laughs> Formula One uh, crashes or, uh, you know, those kinds of things where super high speed and br bright light with your ISO up, you're able to capture like really, really sharp, effective, you know, millisecond imagery that your cameras of yesteryear, which is two weeks ago, um, wouldn't be able <laughs> wouldn't be able to capture. And that's really, I think this is fundamentally for the scientific and and uh, sports focus. I, I don't think taking home mo pictures is uh, the way that they're going to hype it with this ultra slow motion and all of that stuff as well. It, it's a new tool, and I think a lot of people will still want it because it's the best and the, the yeah, of the, course. I mean, without, I like without one maybe, for Christmas maybe without, somebody, without understanding yes. it, but um, this yeah. this is this is gonna be. I believe it's going to be similar to other things where you give people a new capability and they will find new stuff. Find to do it, with yeah. yeah. I could I could use it for the the product photography I do for my wife's online stores overkill right? but yeah you could because <laughs> it, well, it is a bit overkill yeah but at the moment i have to shoot with a three-stop nd filter when we're doing product photography because my lights on the lowest setting because because the because the aesthetic requires we shoot at f4 so you can have the the background of the scene just a little bit blurry mm -hmm. so you know even at my lowest iso uh with the sync speed of 200th or uh, i forget if it's a 200 or 250th it's whatever it's the fastest sync speed on my camera um, I ha and, and the lights on 128th power, I still have to have a three-stop ND filter to get an exposure. That's why we have gels. Yeah, yeah. You, can, you can put something <laughs> in front of the flashes. Or you I can, can, I use, could do that, yes, you I can I use your bokeh adjustment in any number of new um, updates of whether That's it's... Oh, well, Lightroom, does it now. Lightroom does it out of the box and very exactly. good. That, very beautiful, yes. very hard to tell the difference. Uh, there's all kinds of adjustable bokehs in the background. It's quite effective and save yourself. Especially uh, for something like product photography. Shoot them with an iPhone and, and slap some fake bokeh on it and it looks really good. It does, yeah. <laughs> no, no kidding, no kidding. I mean, you've, you've seen Apple's last keynote and they shot that on an iPhone. Well, with all the cranes and stuff <laughs> that you need and all the all the high tech, but the, the sensor and the, the camera was iPhones. Same. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I mean, here what, we go. What? Yeah. What? What is the? I mean, if if we're talking about high speed photography, um, cost is this a consumer, professional, or uh, amateur camera? Um, is this something that is, in your opinions, going to be emulated by many different companies? I think that's probably a given. Will the price come down significantly? Probably. Sure. Will this be the new normal? Absolutely. Um, just like CMOS as opposed to, you know, everything will then step up in terms of, oh, the old fashioned. The thing is, will pictures get any better? Ah, oh, that you saved well, the best question for the end there, didn't there's you? A, there's a creative <laughs> angle here, though, because um, I remember. Um, um, I was I was part of a group where we did some like flash high speed photography with a popping a balloon and then you trigger a flash in the dark with the sound of the balloon and then you have this picture of the popping balloon and uh, I, with with myself on it so it was kind of a, a selfie kind of a self portrait thing and uh, you can just shoot that same shot here now straight from straight in, in sunlight in daylight because the shutter speed goes so slow so you, you have more creative possibilities here so some photography will, will be much easier to achieve without having to go super yeah. high tech and and what the camera has which is i think um, going to be uh, very very much emulated in most new cameras is they are using ai to track focus 
Because obviously, yeah. if you're shooting with a three, I knew you would get AI involved. Ah, it's a drinking game, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's early morning for me, um, I, there, there is that uh, aspect of if you are shooting with a 300 millimeter, and they have with this camera introduced a new light 300 um, lens. Uh, at full frame. So if you're a sports photographer and you are panning quickly or, you know, just moving around, the ability to keep your subject in focus, even if they're moving in and out of the ostensive plane of focus, is going to be much, much more secure for you because it's using AI to recognize what it is you're shooting. And I think that's a that's a good step up for autofocus. Um and, and I think that that technology is going to be very, very common very soon, if not, um, you know, within the next year of new cameras. Hmm. So we yeah. have, um, oh, by the way, there, there are a few open questions about this camera because it is still in pre-production and won't be here until uh, the spring. Hence one the future. Is, <laughs> one is future. image quality. They, the, all the testers have only JPEGs for now. So mm -hmm. uh, th 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 there's a reason that global shutter was not available for these types of cameras in the past, and that is uh, image quality. You have, sure. You have uh, uh, some, some trade-offs here. Um, the other is native ISO starts at 250 mm -hmm. and goes up to 25600. That's interesting, especially like what does that mean if we're shooting uh, multiple, you know, high-speed, quote, motorized blasting right. of raw pictures right um raw and with the kind of memory that it's it's recording moments before and after the quote decisive moment so it you notice in the camera it has two slots for memory cards and i would assume that you're going to need a couple of gigs in both um and uh you know it's it's got to be writing pretty fast what could possibly go wrong um you know, the other thing is it does have, uh, from what I can see, a USB output. It also has a, um, does it look like an Ethernet? Yeah, a lot of them do these days because for the sports photographers, it's to get it down, down the wire as quickly as possible. They yeah. have Ethernet. Ethernet, so. and it does have, and that is the funniest thing of this camera, it has a PC sync port, which does it? is the, the oldest the oldest plug in existence, the oldest yeah. standardized plug in existence, which is how you hook up a studio strobe uh, by a cable to any camera out there, pretty much. Even old uh, analog <laughs> cameras have a PC sync. Sure. Uh, oh, has nothing to do with PCs. Has nothing to do so with... No, it's the old Hasselblad, you know... It's the Proctor Compor to, yeah. Shutter yeah. PC. Compor, yeah. Yeah. So that's interesting that they made the decision to do that. Um, probably because, oh, there you go. Probably, I'm, and I'm guessing that they did it, look, it has two USB. Um, no, well. It has the small, see, it has. Hold on, I'll try to zoom in here. To, multi, it's the got lower many, one many, called many connect multi, connectivity. And HDMI oh, okay. and like stuff. Yeah, so, so I mean, okay. it, it basically has everything. I think they were thinking, well, I've got a lot of old cords here from all my old cameras. <laughs> I, I, I want to use this with my old cords. Um, or uh, it's possible that some of these old, I forget what my old flashes from 25 years ago, if they only connected with the PC. Uh, so I don't know. But they did uh, assume um, to go from soup to nuts in terms of uh, connectivity, which I think is a good thing. And I think, Adrian, you're right. In other words, if you're shooting sports, you want that connected, say, to if you have an Ethernet cable and you're running it in real time to a computer and out, that's... I, I believe that's what people do these days, although it's not something I've seen in, in person myself. So I have to say, um, one of the things that this got me thinking about is the aftermarket for shutter noises. Right, so we have like ring, ringtones for your camera. So, so there's no shutter in this camera, and it's not the first. No, no, sorry, I should say no mechanical shutter in this camera, and it's not the first flagship camera you know in the last couple of years to be launched. At least the Nikon one doesn't have a, a mechanical camera. I know that I forget what the Nikon is called, um, but the 
uh, I, I fancy, you know, um, in a Sergio Leone spaghetti western and the cowboy fires and then you get a ricochet off a rock that goes something like, Pew! Yeah. I, I want that sound, right, for my shutter. I, I want that to be the fu- part of the future of my photography. Because is, you're is, shooting a picture. Uh, oh, I hadn't even got that far. That's even Gun better. Sound. Well done, sir. Well done. I hadn't even got that far. It was just, I was just thinking, well, what sound do I want it to make? Because, you know, it's... So, yeah, there's an opportunity for people to build libraries for those kinds of quiet things, like, you know, electric EV motorcycles. Do you want it to have the Ducati sound? Do you want it to have the... <laughs> like, what sound do you want? Because there's nothing more dangerous than a silent motorcycle splitting lanes. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Isn't, I mean, I mean, you can, you can go and, and, and emulate so many things. Uh, isn't Toyota... Aren't they working on a... On a fake stick shift and clutch pedal for EVs, something. Uh, like that. I don't know, but the the the, the current electric Abarth 500, the little Fiat, uh, the the Abarth version of it, has a, a motorized sound. But because there's no gearbox, it just goes up and up and up in that, tone. That, as, that would drive me as, crazy. It, and I think everybody just turns it off. So it, it, when you fire it up, as it were, it, it has a nice sort of you. Know, uh, the engine firing up noise and a burbly exhaust noise. But and I think we all three are used to, because we all have Teslas, coincidentally, and, and there's that <laughs> whiny there is sound effect. You... Um, I, I, I think about a month ago, my wife was pulling out of the driveway and Chris was like, ah. Oh, in reverse, yeah, in reverse. Yeah, yeah. There you, hear it, you hear it in the background of some of the episodes, yeah. 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 Anyway, so what does that mean for the future of photography? It means probably we'll nothing faster. for me because I'm not going to buy it. But. <laughs> same, same here, same here. I have no, no need way. for it at this point. Yeah, I think uh, I put it in the realm of like the, and we we will talk about this in the coming weeks. The humane button. Um, oh yeah, humane mm-hmm. dot yeah, AI, yeah, yeah. which which uh, there's some visuals involved. Yeah. Yes, and if you've gone to their site and looked around, it is um, is this Google Glass and a pager, or is, <laughs> is it an always on camera that will have people avoiding you like crazy? Um, or is it actually a useful thing? Um, and how do people with arthritis use it? Because it requires a lot of uh, <laughs> hand movements and whatnot. So um, I think the you know the, the the hype is there. It's a beautifully designed object, um, albeit a little big. But um, we'll see. These are <clears throat> texts that are probably best. Uh, to wait till the second, third, or fourth generation. That's what I. That's what I do with the with the global shutter. I'll wait till it trickles down to a yes. camera that I actually want to buy. At this yeah. point, uh, uh, no. so, you know the same. The question, perhaps, though, for 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 the three of us is, is it going to you know, when so, when it when it does trickle down to a camera that we might be attracted to, is it going to be something that actually encourages us? us to take money out of our pockets no nobody does that anymore tap the buttons on our our watches and hold them to the sensor that doesn't have quite the same poetic ring to it does it um are we gonna uh, is is it gonna be something that we think will actually cause us to buy a new camera because we think it's that compelling a feature um it, it it depends. I think if the price point is right and you're looking for another camera not specific to doing this kind of high speed. And you have Sony glass because one big drawback is that the 120 frames per second that it can shoot, it can only do with Sony glass. Oh, well. It oh. goes down with third party lenses. It goes down to 15 frames per second, which is I much wonder- more pedestrian. So, Why do you think that is? Uh, uh, must have something Tech. to do with, with communications between the camera, or maybe it's a way to upsell, to make people go and buy more Sony glass, possibly. Yeah, it's, yeah I, I, it, it's one or the other. It doesn't quite make sense to do maybe, that. Maybe there's a mode, or... maybe there's a, it's to do with the exposure mode and moving the iris in the lens. As and the, it. and maybe, the focus maybe tracking the Sony lenses for have the software. Yeah. Yeah, maybe the Sony lenses will be able to stay open. Yeah, or, or or stay closed down or whatever it's up there. Yeah. So the Q4 then, Jeremiah, the Leica Q4, 
if that has a global shutter, is that going to help you to upgrade from the Q3? Uh, I have to say that, again, depending on the economic circumstances that I find myself at any one point when the new camera is available, I, I will tend now to upgrade the Q system because uh, they do make significant um, changes to it in amazing ways. I mean, this new Q3, I think, is is a step up. Whether it's worth the X, because they will trade in the old one and give you a, a fair shake for it. I'm just wondering if it's worth it, and it depends on what it is you want to go with. Now, a 64 megabit image, um, just raw out of the box with the Sumicron Simulex lens that they have, that combination, the um, the kind of screen that, that folds down so you can shoot waist level. There are a lot, and uh, they, they've uh, adjusted the ergonomics and adjusted the buttons. As a camera that I use all the time, whenever I go out, this is the camera that I would take if I took a camera at all. I would definitely upgrade. And so, because it is the the tool that I find myself going to, and I wouldn't do it just for the sake of it, but if I feel there is a significant movement up in terms of certainly quality is probably best. Um, there's nothing better than having sharper images. If I didn't care about that, then I think my iPhone would do just fine in any number of the small Lumixes that I may have. But but in terms of a, a 64, you know, I, I think that would be really great. What I would love to see, and I don't think anyone will ever do it, is the ability to move from color to black and white, not as software, but in, just in terms of a switch or a, a different... A, a, like, a, like a flip around sensor in the camera. Yes, yeah, something like that. Or <laughs> maybe, like, maybe in a little cylindrical th you know, thing that you can put in one side of your camera and then wind the sensor across. No, all, so, you, need, all, you, need is, all you need is a Bayer Airy that switches, that flips in and flips out. That, and that's really it. it. And, and, and so I noticed won't, that... Won't be able to do this as precise as needs to be. I'm I don't sure. think so. <laughs> I'm just dreaming here. But... but uh, but so the the long answer is yes, I would upgrade, but only under certain circumstances. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to our picks. Might as well start with mine. Since I, it's I, right I, on think, I think it makes sense because before we even <laughs> talked about what the topic would be, you picked the Sony A9 Mark III. Yeah, and uh, there's it very is. little uh, reason for us to discuss why because we've just spent the last. I can look at some pictures and yeah, there's a video um, and uh, there's the there's the magical sensor. I mean, my my beef with Sony generally, the quality is pretty good. Um, you know, uh, in terms of pictures, I, I I really love the quality of the photographs uh, when I've used Sony's. But I find that the engineering and the design, the UI, is really not designed for people who prefer analog feel. In other words, the reference to menus just drives me nuts. Now, I appreciate hunting around men menus and noodling around if you know, you're on a plane flight and want to go through every one of those menus and learn what everything does, and that'll eat up some hours. But in terms of handling a, a, a camera, just the ability to do it blind with just my fingers and whatnot um, is something that I value more than any um, kind of menu technology. And that is my beef with Sony. I, I, I think it's not a, quote, analog friendly camera yeah all right i brought us uh not going to be representing them soon <laughs> yeah sony call us, call us. um <laughs> we uh i'm here i came across this recently uh it's the nasa blog <clears throat> and it's an article written by brian may brian may of queen fame guitarist oh yeah um, who also happens to be an astrophysicist. 
which I didn't really know. So oh, no? nice. um, he uh, and he, and the other thing he's really interested in is stereoscopic photography. So he has a company in London, I think. That uh, yes, it's called the it. London. Yes, it, it's a uh, it, they he and a, a friend revitalized an old sort of you know, Victorian nineteenth century you know, stereoscopy can't be yeah um, stereoscopy club or something like that i got their book and it came with a viewer and stuff like that it's pretty cool actually so what they what they uh have done is and this is interesting so this is about the nasa's Os osiris rex mission that's the thing that came back from a uh, from an asteroid and brought back some some dust and uh, landed on earth a few months ago and uh what what he and and his claudia manzoni is her name um who's a Who's a ah? What's what's the exact term? A cosmic stereo photographer or something like that. So, um, what they've done is they have gone into the archive of pictures that um, that the, that the probe has done, the Bennu probe has done, or the, the no, the Osiris Rex probe has done, and try to find stereoscopic pairs. So. Just imagine you have this whole trough of uh, pictures and the stereo photography was never a, a, a goal in the mission. It was never part of the mission, but it took so many pictures and brought them back that you can find stereoscopic pairs. So they have done that. They've made it in a, into a book. And if you, if you look at the screen and you have the ability to relax your eyes and kind of look through the screen and then give it a second so it snaps in focus, um, there's... Uh, stereo picture of the surface of of the Bennu. Wow, asteroid. that's pretty impressive. I thought for a minute they were pointed at a planet and taking pictures a million miles apart. No, the, the, them. the the probe was very close, yeah, and no. and those two pictures here on, in this example have been taken, I think, several hours apart. So, uh -huh. um, okay. so the ability to go through all that material and find those pairs and make them into uh, into stereo to stereo pictures out of this huge amount of pictures. I think this is a pretty amazing thing. Yes, so, it's totally Yeah, good. yeah. Absolutely good fun. In. So, yeah. Um, Brian May and NASA. Um, all right. Last but not least, we have... What is this? The day? Uh, my, mine's got nothing to do with photography this week. It's just something <laughs> I'm doing this week, right, which I'm finding really interesting. So, I've I've been... Uh, increasingly interested in the last couple of years and the philosophy of stoicism uh -huh. right and uh, i just so happen to have signed up for a sort of you know two-week email video type course at the moment uh um the you probably recognize uh, the fellow if you saw him on youtube his name's ryan holiday and he's all about the stoics and he's you know he coaches you know, professional sports teams and special forces and things like that, you know, for, from a philosophical point of view and, and how to, you know, to help them with their, their mental agility and their mental resilience and stuff like that. And it's just something I'm enjoying investigating this week. Uh, so I thought I'd share it because it's fun. All um, right. Are you going to do a series like, you know, um, gluttony <laughs> um, <laughs> just just explore not gluttony what the seven deadly it? sins that's, that's a the seven kind deadly of sins thing. that's not stoicism no, 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 doesn't what, go in there no what, what's another uh, uh hedonism right <laughs> oh yeah okay yeah um uh, yeah well yeah maybe who knows now the big question is how do we how do we link that up with photography I, I wasn't intending to link it up with photography at all. I mean, no, there's, this there's is a photography probably... show, so... Yeah, so what? <laughs> one, one could say it's articulating a sense of uh, rules which apply to your kind of health in terms you know. of uh, mental acuity moving forward and that discipline yeah. to take I, that yeah. on the road as you take pictures. I think you're right. And I think that, that it, as, in, as in any creative endeavour... Um, you know the, the 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 mindset that you bring to it is in, is incredibly influential on what you produce so i would imagine there will be absolutely lessons that i learn in the next week or so that might be applicable to my photography so that would be any i, I ha can't think of any just off the top of my head right now but um there uh there, there, there i'm sure there'll be something by the time i finish don't miss any classes <laughs> no i'll try not to <laughs> all right 
I think that's that's a good close for this episode. <laughs> so um, yeah, Christmas is too early for this new camera, so we'll we'll have to kind of are, uh, are we going to do a show uh, um, th this year? We have plenty of time to, of you know quote gifts for photographers. Oh, 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 yes, of course. Oh, we let's, could do that. Let's yeah. put this on the, on the calendar uh, before, long before Christmas so we can... Like uh, second week December, first right. week December, that kind of thing. We'll figure this out. Until then, you can find us online at thefuturephotography.com. Join our Discord and, uh, yeah, come back next week. Until then, everyone, take care and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Thank you.